In this media sociology screencast, we're going to look at representations of social class. And this video is, of course, part of this broader topic, looking at media representation. So in this screencast, we're going to have a look at some of the generalizations and stereotypes that the mass media make about the upper class, the middle class and the working class. Now, in the UK, the mass media hardly ever portray the upper classes in a critical light and nor do they often draw any serious attention to inequalities in wealth and power. Uh, instead, uh, representations of the upper classes uh, in popular films or television costume dramas uh, tend to portray members of this class either in an eccentric way or in a nostalgic way. So what we tend to get from uh, these types of media representations is a rosy, idealised picture of a ruling elite characterised by honour, culture and good breeding. One section of the British upper class that has successfully converted much of the modern mass media to its cause is the monarchy. And Narin notes that this is because after the Second World War, uh, the monarchy, with the collusion of the media, reinvented itself as a royal family with a cast of characters um, not unlike our own families who stood for national values uh, such as niceness and decency. So members of this family were presented as being just like us. For example the Queen uh, was portrayed as being just an ordinary working mother doing an extraordinary job. And this successful makeover uh, resulted in a national obsession with the royal family. And this is reflected in uh, media coverage that is focused positively on every trivial detail uh, of their lives. So the royal family has been turned into an ongoing narrative uh, or soap story. Let's now have a look at media representations of the middle class. And some sociologists argue that the middle classes so professionals, managers, white-collar workers, etc., and their concerns are over-represented in the media. So middle-class values are presented as the norm, as the core values of British society to which everybody should aspire to. And we can see this if we look at the middle-class family, which is often presented as the ideal to which people should aspire to in advertisements. And Leach refers to this advertising ideal as the serial packet family. And one of the reasons for this middle class bias uh, within the British media is most of the creative personnel who work in the mass media industry are themselves from middle class backgrounds. And within the news and current affairs, it's the middle classes who dominate positions of authority and when experts appear uh, on the news, they're inevitably middle class. In contrast, media representations of the poor and working class uh, tend to be more negative. So Newman, for example, argues that when working class people are featured, uh, the media depiction is often either unflattering or pitying. So working class heads of households uh, on primetime television had typically been portrayed uh, either as well-intentioned uh, but dumb buffoon-type figures, such as Homer uh, Simpson, uh, or as uh, immature exhibitionists, such as Phil Mitchell from EastEnders. And Newman also argues that when news organisations focus on the working class, it's generally to label them as a problem, uh, so to stigmatise them in some way as welfare cheats, as drug addicts, or as criminals. And studies of the media reporting of strikes and industrial disputes by the Glasgow Media Group um, have suggested that the media uh, portray unreasonable workers as making trouble for reasonable employers. Now, a recent development in media representations of the poor, highlighted by Sheldrick and MacDonald, uh, is the representation and labelling of some sections of the working class as chavs. And Shrildrick and MacDonald suggest that this is another way of suggesting that there are certain sections of the poor 
who deserve to be poor and are therefore undeserving of public sympathy. And this is also an issue that's been highlighted by Owen Jones in his recent book Chabs, The Demonisation of the Working Class. So in this book, Owen Jones argues that being able to make brutal, almost uh, sub-racist remarks about working class people is the one acceptable form of discrimination. So Owen Jones is arguing that repeatedly uh, within the mass media, the working class are seen as being feckless, as being stupid, as having too many children, as essentially being scroungers. And Owen Jones's argument is that this demonisation of working class people is used to legitimate the growing inequality in wealth and income that we find within the UK. So as we can see from this graphic, the richest 1% of the population have as much wealth as the poorest 60%. But rather than focusing on these structural issues, um, media representations of the working class uh, encourage us not to see the poor as victims of circumstances, uh, often beyond their control, but instead the media encourage us to blame individuals for their poverty. So structural issues to do with inequality and poverty are individualised, they're blamed uh, on the bad habits and lifestyles of the poor. And in class, we'll have a look at one section of Owen Jones's book where there's a brilliant dissection of the differences in the media coverage of the disappearance of Madeleine McCann and the coverage of the disappearance of Sharon Matthews and how Karen Matthews, the mother of Sharon Matthews, uh, was made symbolic of the perceived problems of the working class within the media. And the way in which the mass media will often use very extreme cases uh, as if they were uh, emblematic of the poor in general was also highlighted last year uh, by media reporting of Mick Philpott. Now if you can't remember this case, let me just remind you, uh, Mick Philpott uh, was living with his mistress and his mistress had walked out on him, uh, taking their children as she left. And what he did is he devised a sickening plot to set fire to the house uh, that his mistress was uh, living in, and he was going to emerge as a hero as he rescued uh, his children from their beds, and he was going to implicate uh, the lover who jilted him. Uh, but the flames devoured the house far quickly than his inhuman plan had predicted, and six of his children died uh, in this particular fire. And as we can see from this Daily Mail headline, that rather than simply seeing uh, Mick Philpott as an individual monster, there were sections of the press who claimed that the Philpots uh, said something about modern Britain, and particularly about what they saw as the shameless, overbreeding scroungers who were supposedly bleeding uh, an over-generous welfare state dry. But as Owen Jones has argued, the truth is that the Philpots say nothing about anyone except for themselves, just as the serial murderer GP, Harold Shipman, said nothing about middle-class professionals in general. There are, and have always been, a small minority of individuals capable of breathtaking cruelty, but the Philpot case relates in no way to people on benefits uh, in this country. And over the last few years, the government and much of the media have fed us a relentless, poisonous diet of skivers and scroungers, of the feckless and work-shy poor, hiding behind blinds, uh, unwilling to work. And we now have a new genre of television programme uh, that we might refer to as poverty porn, and Benefit Street uh, illustrates this uh, new kind of genre. So Benefit Street uh, follows a now predictable formula where television producers uh, try to search for uh, unsympathetic examples of unemployed people, and in this case it was people living on a street in Birmingham. Uh, they betray them in the worst possible light, and they fuel the pervasive sense that people on benefits are feckless scroungers. 
And I think we can relate some of this material to Gramsci's concept of hegemony. So Gramsci was uh, an Italian uh, Marxist intellectual who was interested in looking at how control was maintained uh, within society. And in particular, he focused on the role of ideology. So hegemony is about ideological power. It's about how uh, the ruling class uh, use ideology to control the masses. So hegemony is about how the ruling class uh, shape people's minds. It describes the process by which the ruling class persuade other groups to accept their view of society as common sense. So one way in which hegemony can be achieved by the ruling class uh, is illustrated by this quote from Malcolm X. Uh, if you're not careful, the newspapers will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and love the people who are doing the oppressing. And if we go back to the example of so-called welfare scroungers, we perhaps got a good contemporary example of Gramsci's idea of hegemony in action. So if we look at the last few years, it's been a tough time uh, for many people. Unemployment's gone up, uh, lots of people are working part-time but need a full-time job, and people's wages have either gone down or they've stagnated. And it was the behaviour, not of the poor, but it was the behaviour of those people at the top of society, particularly those people uh, who worked in the banking sector, uh, that caused... Uh, the longest fall in living standards since the Victorian era. However, uh, despite the culpability of the people at the top of society, in the aftermath of the banking crisis, it's been the behaviour of those people at the bottom of society that has been scrutinised, that's been criticised and demonised uh, ever since. So one of the main ways in which ideological hegemony uh, is maintained in society is through misdirection, uh, which is a term often used to describe uh, magic, where um, you have a form of deception in which the attention of an audience is focused on one thing in order to distract its attention from another. And this infographic represents the concept of misdirection uh, in action. So we've got this massive problem of tax avoidance and tax evasion. So this is the rich mainly uh, not paying uh, for things like schools and hospitals and other public services that we rely on uh, as a society. So rather than focusing on this big problem, the media and the political class have created the illusion that this smaller problem of benefit fraud is what we should focus on. In other words, the demonisation of people and benefits uh, has the ideological function of distracting people from the much bigger uh, problems uh, such as tax avoidance and tax evasion. 